You know that big ship fire? The media's been going on about it and on about it and won't shut up and they're saying it's all because of electric cars. Electric cars are at fault for causing the biggest shipping catastrophe over the last three years. Well, it turns out, actually, it wasn't an electric car that started the fire. Now, I'm very curious to know what started this fire, but we know that it wasn't an EV. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. My name's Sam Evans and you're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. The Driven has just written a really interesting piece here. I'm going to share it with you. And it says that a large fire on a ship carrying 3,784 new cars off the coast of the Netherlands last month was unlikely to have caused a large fire on a ship carrying 3,784 new cars off the coast of Netherlands last month while apparently the fire was very unlikely to have been caused by an electric car. Those claims are made by the boss of the salvage company handling the wreck. In other words, the company who have actually taken the wreck apart piece by piece, they're saying, um, yeah, big problem here, guys. Um, the fire didn't start with the EVs are. The Fremantle Highway, a Panama-flagged car and truck carrier chartered by K-Line, was en route to Singapore from Germany when it caught fire on the 25th of July. Speculation blamed one of the 498 electric cars on board after an employee of the ship owner, Japanese company Shui Kisen Kaisha, which also owned the 2021 Suez Canal blocker, ever given container ship initially suggested an EV might be the culprit. Now, they didn't know this. They didn't have any proof. They were just speculating here. And the media jumped on board this. It was such a great story. Let's go with it. EVs, we told you they all burn. We told you they're going to be the death of you. They're going to kill you. And um, without it doing any real research, this became the official story. The fire was caused by EVs. It was a ship of burning electric cars. However, between 900 and 1,000 cars, including the EVs, were in good condition. None of the EVs even burnt. This was said by the chief of the salvage company, Royal Boscalis Westminster NV, Peter Podowski, and this statement was made to the media only a few days ago. The media, surprisingly or unsurprisingly, have not reported on this. Why? Because it's not interesting. The EV story burning the boat to the to the ground. That was much more interesting. When we find out the truth that it wasn't EVs, well, who cares? The fire probably started in the eighth deck of the 12 deck ship, as that is where the worst damage is, Badowski told Bloomberg. Now, the reality is the EVs aren't burnt. So yeah, obviously they didn't cause the fire. Badowski himself fanned the flames by saying, all experts with any knowledge on this topic agree that the transportation of electric vehicles introduces additional risks. However, Boscalis owned Smith Salvage and Moultra ship were contracted to handle the salvage operation. And the cause of the fire is still unknown. Now, it would be pretty clear that the claim would be made that it was an EV if, well, there was any possible reality that it might have been one. But, well, there isn't. The fire, unfortunately, did lead to the death of one person in the crew. 21 Indian nationals jumped off the ship and needed to be rescued by helicopter and lifeboats before the ship was towed to a port in the Netherlands. The Fremantle Highway isn't the first time a ship fire has been blamed on electric cars. The Felicity Ace, says the Driven, caught fire in 2022 and a year later the cause of the blaze that sent the ship 10,000 feet under the sea was still unknown. But of course, that one was blamed on EVs as well. However, a comment by Captain Jao Mendez Kabikas in a Reuters story that the lithium-ion batteries in EVs were keeping the fire alive made it, well, EVs become this story. Now, anytime a ship sinks, it's going to be EVs. There must be someone's EV on there. There must be, I don't know, a, a laptop with an EV battery in there. Anyway, now there was one ship that apparently did sink because of an EV catching fire, but only one. The first and to date, the only proven EV fire at sea was caused by a converted cash guy charging on a car ferry. 
So a Nissan Qashqai converted by some backyard mechanic into an EV, happened to be charging on a ferry, genius idea that is, and that vehicle caught fire. But that's the only car that's ever caught fire that was a so-called EV, if you can call it that, considering it was actually an internal combustion engine car that had been sort of hacked and turned into a Frankenstein EV. Although ship fires are feared by marine insurers and shippers generally, and as a result, shipping premiums increase if you put EVs on the ship, EVs aren't actually very likely to catch fire on a ship. For one, uh, they're not plugged in. For two, they're not running. Uh, the risks of an EV fire on a ship are, as you can see, incredibly low, considering it's never happened before. Well, we no one really knows what they are, but clearly they're much, much lower than what the general public believe. To date, no fire on board a Roro or pure car and truck carrier has been proven to have been caused by a factory built electric car, said the organization in a statement. IUMI, as in I-U-M-I, understands that the transportation of EVs raises certain risks that are different to those involved in carrying internal combustion engine vehicles, but research suggests that the fire risks are not heightened or more dangerous. The truth here is, my friends, that actually there's been a number of fires on ships with internal combustion engine cars, which have been proven that those cars were made in factories and they did cause fires. However, in the real world, electric car fires do happen, but they're far less likely to happen, even as a percentage of cars in the marketplace, than are gasoline-powered vehicles. In fact, data proves this to be the case. Data from the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency, MSB, shows that EVs are 20 times less likely to catch fire than petrol and diesel cars, with 23 EV fires in 2022 from the country's fleet of 611,000 EVs, or a rate of zero, 0.004%. However, those EVs that did burn, 0.004%, were actually involved in crashes. And as you can imagine, on a ship, pretty unlikely that a car is going to crash into another car at high speed. Over the same period, though, 3,400 fires were reported in Sweden's 4.4 million petrol cars and diesel cars representing 0.08% of the fossil car fleet, making it 20 times more likely that an internal combustion engine vehicle will be involved in a fire. Now, sure, the fleet of cars, on average, I think it's about seven years old in Sweden. So you could say, well, they're older cars, a little bit older, so therefore it's not really a fair point. But 20 times more likely, let's say we halve that number because of the slightly older fleet to say, 10 times more likely. 10 times more likely is still a much more likely scenario. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.